Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for Mikey Garcia against Juan Carlos Burgos. They're both 26 years old. There's a two-inch height advantage for Burgos, but there's a half-inch arm length advantage for Mikey Garcia, measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in within a pound of the 130-pound limit for this weight class. It's deja vu all over again for Juan Carlos Burgos. Almost exactly one year ago, Burgos fought Rocky Martinez for the very same belt for which he challenges tonight in the very same ring. His seemingly winning effort one year ago earned him a controversial draw. Our scorer, Harold Letterman, had him as a 117-111 winner that night. So we talked with Burgos about that fight and tonight's opportunity against Mikey Garcia. We knew that Martinez was a great fighter, a warrior, and we had seen him fight, and we knew it was going to be a tough fight. At the beginning of the fight, we uh, started attacking with very effective punches to the body. Wow, Burgos with some vicious body shots. And then at mid-fight, we started to uh, move a bit more, uh, look for our range, our distance. He's beating the hell out of Martinez there right now. And then the rest of the fight, I think we closed it uh, off uh, very well at the end. We knew that we had done a great job. I think we should have won, but they didn't give it to us. The bout is a draw. Champion still remains the title holder. Truthfully, it was something very sad. They stopped me from obtaining my objective, which was to be a world champion. But it's a chapter that we finished, and now we're focused on the fight against Mikey Garcia. So I'm going to fight against a great fighter, but we will see a Carlos Burgos that is ready for big things, and the 2014 will be a great year for me. Now he prepares to walk for the ring. Andre Ward, Garcia is a brilliant counterpuncher, so it can be perilous to attack him straightforwardly. Burgos has a two-inch height advantage. How should he use it? Well, I think you you, you mentioned it. Um, most fighters they come straight at Mikey. He's uh, a very accurate counterpuncher. He's a master counterpuncher, I would say. I think Burgos, it would serve him to try to box Mikey in spots. Be aggressive, but box him in, spot, in spots and actually use the height advantage that he has. Yeah, and we saw him do that against uh, against Martinez, Burgos that is, to great effect. It's, it's a tough position for Burgos here. He fights Hasegawa in Japan, his first shot at a belt. He's not ready yet. He's totally ready for Martinez. He wins that fight clearly. He is robbed. Let's not mince words. And now, okay, well, it's the third shot, it's now or never, and it's against the best fighter he's yet fought, who's one of the hottest fighters in boxing. It's a tall order for Juan Carlos Burgos tonight. And as Burgos warms up in the ring, there's a look at 130-pound champ Mikey Garcia, co-trained by his father Eduardo and his brother Robert, who once held a title belt in this very same weight class. Boxing has become an extremely lucrative family business for the Garcias of Oxnard whose humble beginnings laid the groundwork for their remarkable success. Raised in Oxnard, California. As a kid, my parents used to work in strawberry fields. My dad used to uh, get up early in the morning, go work, and later when their shift was over, he would send my mom home with, with a friend and he would have to go straight to the gym. That's my dad's passion. Boxing is, is his passion, that's what he loves. Mikey grew up watching me fight. He grew up watching Fernando Vargas fights. So he grew up in boxing, even though he never went to the gym when he was a kid. It was just something in him. I never had a goal or a vision or a dream to become you know, a professional boxer, less a world champion. It just kind of happened. I know my dad was very, very proud when he was with me and making me world champion, and along with my brother. I mean, he's turning out to be one of the best trainers in the world, and I'm glad that he's getting that recognition that he deserves. We're so close that uh, I don't think there's anything that could, that, could, uh, that could stop us, you know, that could change us. We want to make sure that we leave a, a good legacy behind us. My brother's doing it with his fighters, being a trainer. My dad did it with his fighters. What else am I going to do except, you know, make my own name? kind of like you know the American dream you know family move immigrants move over and they do something they love and you find what you're good at and you keep doing it and you make it big long ago Max Kellerman as top rank prepared Oscar De La Hoya for his superstar pack they brought him to New York to show him off in Madison Square Garden is this exactly the same mentality 
and against the toughest fighter he's yet fought, the, the best overall package he's yet fought. Mikey Garcia, in many ways, is the culmination of a generational boxing family the way Floyd Mayweather is in the fight with the fighting Mayweathers. You know, I have some damn good Mayweather fighters, but all that knowledge, you know, seems to be accumulated in the person of Floyd Mayweather. And he's the best practitioner in that family and obviously the best fighter in the world. And Mikey Garcia has a similar place in his family, an analogous place where his brother had a belt and his father's a trainer and Fernando Vargas is like one of the family and he made it big. But Mikey seems like the best of them all. All right, both fighters are in the ring. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from the mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden, New York, New York, USA, Mr. Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated, in association with Artie Berlulo's Banner Promotions and Thompson Boxing, is proud to present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO. Super featherweight championship of the world. Sponsored by Tecate, Con Caracter, and sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission, Chairperson Melvina Lathan, the World Boxing Organization President, Francisco Paco Barcarcel. At ringside, the three judges scoring will be Julie Letterman, Michael Burnett, and John Potteray, and inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, referee Harvey Dock. And now, the officials are ready, the fighters are ready. So far, the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world on HBO from Madison Square Garden, USA. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner with his head trainer, Tiburcio Garcia. Wearing red and officially weighing in at 129 pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one. 30 victories, including 20 knockouts, only one defeat with two draws. From Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, the challenger, former WBC Latino and WBC Silver Super Featherweight Champion, El Mini Burgos, Juan Carlos Burgos. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner with his head trainer, Robert Garcia. Wearing dark blue and officially weighing in at 129, one quarter pounds. A perfect professional record consisting of 33 fights, 33 victories, including 28 knockouts. From the Oxnard Boxing Academy, Moreno Valley, California, USA, the two time champion, former featherweight, world champion, and reigning defending. Undefeated WBO Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Miguel Angel, Mikey Garcia. Hey, Mike. See you again, man. You too. Okay guys, we went over the instructions earlier. Remember to obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times. Nosotros vimos las instrucciones antes. Recuerda, escúchame, rotate siempre, obedeceme todo el tiempo. Touch him up, toca los guantes. Good luck, buena suerte. Juan Carlos Burgos says at the moment there are no uh, belt holders from Tijuana and he wants to fix that tonight, bring a belt back and make that proud city prouder. Mikey Garcia, looks at Burgos and must see a, a door. On the other side of that door is fame and fortune, but he's got to go through it to get there. In his approach to the art of the knockout, and he has an 85% knockout percentage, Garcia is as precise and as clinical as any fighter you'll see. He 
has developed a pattern of watching and waiting for the first three, four, five rounds, sometimes giving away rounds while he looks and examines and tries to figure out exactly where is the weakness which he is going to exploit. And eventually, he steps forward, takes command, begins to throw the kind of vicious counter punches which have defined him up to this point, and usually it's only two or three rounds from that point to the moment when the referee brings an end to the fight. Let's see what he does with Burgos tonight. Garcia was down on a right hand from Martinez in the second round of his last fight in 2013. And that's one thing Burgos felt he could build on. He saw him go down against Martinez. He got hit with a right hand. Maybe I can hit him with a right hand too. Good jab early by Juan Carlos Burgos. Yeah, Burgos doing a good job of establishing the jab right now in the center of the ring. Left hook for Mikey Garcia. Good quick left hook by Garcia. Drives Burgos back with the left uh, with the left jab and the straight right hand. I don't know if you can teach what Garcia does, which is manage his distance very well. He's a shorter fighter, but he's still managing his distance at the right distance the way he's supposed to. He's not smothering his work, and he's not out of range. He's just in range to counter when he needs to. Well, that's a field thing. And, of course, you know, Max talked about the family background, growing up in the sport. For a long time, he wasn't interested. Didn't step forward and say, oh, I want to be a boxer, too. He was well late into his teens before he finally decided to take this up. But no doubt he had been watching the whole time. Yeah. Mikey didn't choose his profession. His profession chose him. He was too good at it not to do it. He looks at Burgos and, and sees a guy who can do a lot of the things he can do, but he feels that his skills are pitched higher, and, and so far in his career, he's been right. Time! One potential future opponent is seated here at ringside tonight. That's former Cuban Olympian and Cuban defector, Yuri Orcas Gamboa. Gamboa is seen as somebody who could be an interesting matchup with Garcia uh, in the next year. His stock has slipped somewhat as the result of an absence of entertainment value in his recent fights. You want another, another chance to the Look alive and don't let, don't let him hit you. Don't give him a chance. Don't let him think either. Jab, jab me first. You throw the punches first. Lively. Look alive. Look alive with no responses. I mentioned the clinical watching and waiting pattern which has defined Garcia in so many of his recent fights. Here again in round one, you saw it. Garcia throwing only 25 punches by CompuBox count, landing 7 out of 25. Burgos was 6 out of 48. If a ringside judge were scoring based mostly on activity, he might have scored the first round for Burgos. But Garcia was taking notes. I didn't really see anyone land anything in that round. I saw a couple of pretty good left hooks for Mikey Garcia, in my view. It's hard to tell it was landing clean, I thought, but... Garcia's been also able to rely on his power in recent fights, Jim, where he doesn't have to sweat the round so much because eventually he runs a guy into something that ends the fight. And the question is going to be if Burgos can take the shots of uh, Garcia, how will this fight look as it progresses? And can Burgos fight a consistent offensive fight without having lows like he tends to have sometimes on the ropes? Round two of the scheduled 12, Mikey Garcia in the blue trunks with white trim. Juan Carlos, Carlos Burgos in the red, white, and green trunks. Fighting for Garcia's 130-pound world title. 
and particularly for Garcia, bigger stakes having to do with the potential for big events in his career down the road. It's like we talked about in the onset. Burgos is not, at the moment, overshooting his target. He's not being overly aggressive. He's actually trying to box Garcia, which I think right now is a, is a good decision. Good right hand. Right hand for Juan Carlos Burgos. Good counter left hook inside for Burgos. He's making Garcia lead a little bit, which he's not, he's not as comfortable leading as he is countering. And I think, again, that's a good move, good strategy for Burgos. Burgos is an experienced fighter at a world-class level. He's big. He has some skills. He's tough. He's in his prime. I'd say overall the toughest package that Garcia's had to face so far in his career, and you're seeing why right now. He's got real skills, as does Garcia, and one element of that is that both fighters are blocking a lot of punches with their gloves. In fact, the majority of punches are being blocked by the defender's glove so far. is very patient because he has a belief which has been reinforced by his entire professional career. And right oh. hand by Garcia and a good counter shot in return by Burgos and Garcia almost dipped to the canvas. I was going to say that he wins the exchanges when you match skills but he didn't just then. Fatima Garcia, Mikey's wife, seated at ringside. Cheerleading right now. No se confie, okay? No te don't be overconfident, Mikey. don't be overconfident, Mikey. All right? Gotta make it quick, okay? And he's gonna keep coming with that hook, okay? Remember, he's gonna keep coming with that hook, all right? He's gonna throw it all the time, he always does. No, 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 you know, start, start cutting the ring a little bit, but not, you know, you know how to do, you know how to do your pressure, you know how to do your pressure, all right, little by little, but you gotta stay more active. The rounds are still too. Quick shot to the liver, also. But I like the way you do it. We boxing just like that. And quick shot. Garcia lands a big right hand on Burgos's temple. Burgos covers up and lands a big left hook of his own that buckles Garcia and definitely gets his attention. And the pattern held through round two in terms of activity. Burgos, the more active fighter in round two. Now by CompuBox count, he's thrown 104 punches in the first two rounds, landing 17. Garcia is 16 out of 66. So far, only throwing 33 punches per round. That's a relatively slow pace for this division. In a match of skills, Garcia is usually the guy whose punch gets there first, but there you saw Burgos throw the tighter left hook, and he had his chin tucked, and Garcia didn't. I think Garcia relaxed a little bit after he landed the right hand initially. Stranger things have happened. Hard right hand by Garcia. Perfect counter shot there. Quick, quick, and Burgos is holding quick. on for dear life now, as he was stunned by that shot. And he's a veteran and he did the right thing. Don't try to exchange when you're hurt. Hold, recover, and then get back to work. And Burgos did that. Stranger things have happened than a guy like Burgos upsetting a guy like Garcia on the way to the big time, on the way to Garcia's big, big time. But um, Garcia does have that equalizing power and you just saw it there. And Burgos is not supposed to win, but he can win if Mikey's not on his game. And right now, it's a very competitive fight. Halfway through round three of the scheduled 12. Burgos with a revenge motive in mind. He believes that he would be the rightful owner of the belt, which Garcia took from Rocky Martinez. Because one year ago, here in Madison Square Garden, Martinez was given a draw and held on to the title belt in a fight that most ringside observers seem to think Burgos had won. And our unofficial ringside scorer that night, Harold Letterman, had Burgos 117-111. Nine rounds to three. And 
both fighters know they can be hurt by the other. Garcia also often relies on his superior timing, but I wouldn't say he's been able to impose his timing so far in this fight. It's been no better than Burgos' for the most part. Yeah, and again, I think it's just like we talked about early on, Bur Burgos is boxing, Burgos isn't rushing in, he's making it hard for the natural counterpuncher in Garcia. February 17, don't miss Road to Chavez Vera 2. We'll look back at Julio Cesar Chavez Jr.'s controversial decision win last September and look ahead to their upcoming encore. March 1, it's the live fight. And both Julio Cesar Chavez and Brian Vera intend to leave no doubt as to who the winner is this time around. Check out our Instagram page for more photos like this one. And that same night, it's a fascinating featherweight matchup as veteran tough guy Orlando Salido puts his 126-pound title on the line before a large crowd, which probably will favor him overwhelmingly against two-time gold medalist Vasil Lomachenko, who will be competing in just his second professional fight. Lomachenko, regarded by some experts as the greatest amateur fighter ever in the sport. And if that replay had continued, you would have seen Juan Carlos Burgos grabbing Mikey Garcia's left hand, or left arm, I should say, and holding on and riding it as though it was a surfboard for about 15 seconds. You see why it was such a big punch, uh, the effect it had. Burgos' right arm involuntarily dropped, like he was out of it for a second. He was badly hurt by that punch. Yeah, they're even now. The reference there to the left hand that Burgos landed in round two. I think Burgos with this height advantage, he has to keep the jab in Martinez's face, keep him off balance, and also set up his big shots where Martinez can't see the shots coming because if he allows Martinez to get comfortable, engage his range, that's where Martinez is most comfortable, and that's where he lands his counter shots the best. Our unofficial ringside scorer tonight is Steve Weisfeld. Steve, how do you have it through three? Jim, I have a 29-28 Garcia. First round, Burgos was busier, but he had trouble connecting. Garcia's shots were slightly more effective. Rounds two and three, they traded staggers. So after three rounds, I have Garcia up by one point. Not that it changes the score at all. I agree with Steve's scorecard, but I think I'd rather be Garcia in his stagger moment than Burgos in his. I think Garcia more seriously hurt Burgos. Although the crowd may not know that because it was Garcia's knees who buckled at the moment when he was hit by a hard shot. And it was slightly more subtle that Burgos reached out and grabbed Garcia's left arm the way he did. And now we're back to the Cold War as both fighters pick off shots with their gloves skillfully over and over again it's a very tight fight right now neither fighter wants to overcommit fighters who rely on timing and a long jab and power shots and counter punches as mikey garcia does i think of alexis arguello and no not just because they're both latino and have mustaches you know they have certain similarities in their styles um he was given problems by guys who could move, guys who wouldn't come at him. Lands a straight right hand again there, and, behind and the jab. Here you see Garcia also much more comfortable when someone's coming at him. Rocky Martinez threw him off a little bit by moving and countering, and Burgos is doing the same thing here. You've got to have control of this. You've got to win round by round. Now this is the fifth. 
And be careful. Look alive. Two, three punches. One, two. Finish it off. One, two, three. Straight shots. And they go away. Attack. One attack after the other. Just to keep raising and then go to the body. Boom. And then left to the body. Practice it, right? Do it when you see it for sure, right? Now, come. Because I'm telling you. Okay? Every time, you got to be careful with that. He still throws that strong left hook. Okay, and he throws it long and wide. So be very aware, right? Okay? Well, after getting staggered in round three, Juan Carlos Burgos couldn't close the distance enough in round four to land with any effectiveness at all. So Mikey Garcia has started to take over the copy box numbers. He's 33 out of 137. To Burgos, 26 out of 171. In other words, Burgos is now only landing 15% of his punches. And that's another element of Garcia's game, which is perhaps underrated. He's a skillful defender, in addition to being a skillful counterpuncher. And actually not mustachioed tonight, Jim, as I just noticed. Got the, got the whiskers on the chin only tonight. Mikey Garcia. Right now, let's take advantage of the opportunity to listen to Robert Garcia. Mikey's older brother and trainer as he shouts instructions, if he shouts instructions, from the corner. Hands up high and let's start taking those baby steps. There you go, stay a little more busy. There you go, more. There you go, nice right hand. Jab again, jab again. There you go, come on, come on, there you go. Come on, come on, keep going, keep going. There you go, there you go. So that was a great illustration of the coherence of the relationship between the two. It was almost like ventriloquism. As Robert would say, throw the jab, and one second later, Mikey would throw the jab. He said he's the culmination of the experience in his family, which is generational and even with his, within his own generation. Robert's a bit older than he is, but he's grown up around it. It's, it's something that's second nature to him. Garcia, Robert Garcia is coming off a terrific year as a trainer and he's had several good ones in a row. But of course, Marcos Maidana's thrilling victory over Adrian Broner punctuated the year for him and that was a triumph for the Garcia family. And Burgos has to know that he's on the B side tonight, that Mikey Garcia is on the A side and if he wants this to be a successful third try at the title he's gonna have to pick his spots to step it up and again as we talked about early on make it clear that he's the victor in the fight because if it goes at this pace this is gonna favor Mikey Garcia all throughout the fight. Well, one thing that seems apparent to me at this point Andre Ward is that Garcia has made the point about his greater power because Burgos is working from a distance at which it's very difficult for him to get anything done. Yeah, he's, he's more being, he's being defensively minded. I mean, that's clear to see. And that powers the reason, as you mentioned. Time! Immediately following this telecast, stick around for Real Sports. Among the stories, a look at the NFL and marijuana. Might the country's most popular sport accept its most popular drug. You gotta attack the body also. You can stop doing that. When you come in, throw the straight shots to the body and then the right. Straight shot, straight shot up top and then or, or hook it to the body. One, two, and uppercut there. But lively, be careful with his hook. Look alive. Stop taking those little steps to the side, to the side, to the side, to the side, and then attack, right? Doing good. Right? Breathe. Your chance to see somebody shot, right? As a special preparation for the fight tonight, Juan Carlos Burgos brought back a trainer from the past, Roberto Sandoval, who was also the trainer of his uncle, Victor Burgos. When Victor Burgos suffered a brain bleed after a fight several years ago, Roberto Sandoval prayed in a church and made a promise to God that he wouldn't train a boxer again. But 
This was a special occasion, and Juan Carlos Burgos wanted him back. So Sandoval came back and handled Burgos throughout the training camp, but then elected not to be in the ring tonight in the corner with the fighter. So another trainer, Tiburcio Garcia, is the one who's actually in Burgos' corner and talking to him tonight. Debate, as you will, the effectiveness of training with one trainer and listening to another one during the fight, but that's the way Burgos elected to do it. Roberto Sandoval is in Tijuana tonight, not here in Madison Square Garden. A side, B side, Andre. Yeah. But there's pressure on the A side to make the fight, and I think you're starting to see that creep into the fight a little bit. That Mikey feels he has the responsibility to make this fight. Right. We we talked earlier about Burgos respecting the power of Garcia, and a lot of times in fights, fighters get buzzed or get hurt from punches that you wouldn't think hurt them. But I think outside of Burgos being vis visibly buzzed, I think there's been some shots that he's taken from. Garcia that has uh, caused him to be more defensive minded and we saw that in the last round when as Andre and I covered he had backed out to a distance from which he wouldn't be, have a chance to get much offense done but now Mikey Garcia as Max Kellerman points out responding to the showbiz pressure on the A side has decided to close the distance again and take the risk of getting in there where he can do some work because of his exquisite timing partly um, Garcia is a real puncher he catches Burgos here and other fighters in the past right at the apex of the power of the shot. Left hand to the body landed for Garcia. He hasn't landed a lot of body shots in the fight, and that could be helpful as he tries to break Burgos down and go for the knockout to continue his streak. The 11 knockouts in a row for Garcia coming into the fight. He's going to have to get used to this, Mikey. Guys who are showing him lateral movement. Um, Gamboa is a prospective opponent. You would think would use lateral movement, would be highly motivated for that fight should Mikey win tonight and that fight come off. Gamboa, gold medalist with lightning speed, hasn't looked good recently, but you would think against Mikey you'd get the best version of Gamboa, and there'd be a lot of lateral movement there. Time! Another spectator here tonight, not a potential opponent for Mikey Garcia, is Sergey Kovalev, who's eager to crush somebody. The Russian from Fort Lauderdale, nicknamed the Crusher, coming off his crushing four knockout year in 2013, and hoping for a potential matchup with the other big bomber in the light heavyweight division, Adonis Stevenson, in 2014. Okay. Cool. You, and you know, you know that, right? Anytime you want, let me. Don't get, don't let, don't let us go too easy, too easy. Get, you know, you never know what the judges, right? Some of them have been a little bit too, too easy, where, where you don't know. All right? He's not landing anything, but he's, you know, just a little, you know, he's throwing. Here we see Garcia biding his time, blinding Burgos with the jab and landing a roundhouse right to the chin. And those are the kind of punches that have Burgos tentative in this fight. CompuBox averages per round through six. Garcia, eight out of 35. Burgos, six out of 42. Burgos was throwing 75 punches per round against Rocky Martinez here a year ago. He's considerably more conservative tonight. Steve Weisfeld, how do you have it halfway through? Jim, I have it 59, 55 for Garcia. There seems to come a time in Garcia's fights when his opponents have a feeling of helplessness. We're not there yet, but certainly, as Andre said, Burgos seems to have a feeling of doubt. Burgos also seems to be moving his head too much when he's totally out of range, as opposed to when he's closer. So after six rounds, I have Garcia up by four points. Yeah, to Andre's point, earlier in this broadcast, Burgos was on the raw end of a, of a really bad decision, a draw against Rocky Martinez in a fight he clearly won here in this ring not long ago. And he had to have the kind of fight tonight that leaves no doubt if he hopes to win a decision. And there's no doubt that Mikey is the one winning this fight right now. Bur and, and, and the worst thing for Burgos would be to lose in a stinker kind of performance where there's not a lot of action. Yeah, and I think 
there's a silent negotiation sometimes with fighters, and I think Burgos is negotiating with himself right now. Do I take the extra risk and possibly get caught and get knocked out, or do I play it safe and hope to maybe land something down the stretch and go the distance? This is what's going on right now, I believe, with Burgos. Fighter can go into a match very confident, very eager to engage, but you get touched with a certain type of shot, and you it can change your mind very quickly. One of the differences between a champion and a contender, a, 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 a master and and just an expert, is that the master, the champion, accumulates small advantages constantly, and it adds up over time. Andre I can pick no better example than you in boxing right now accumulating those advantages constantly until there's a wide gap between you and your opponent and that's what Mikey's done tonight right and at, at this level good left hook for Mikey at this level it's the small things that get you ahead that's the difference as right. you mentioned between a contender and a champion people think it's a it's a lot of big things you know it's a lot of small things that get you to the top and keep you at the top and right now Mikey's showing what it takes to be a champion because while Burgos may be silently negotiating with himself the question of whether to take a risk or walk his way to a 12-round loss. Garcia is stepping forward and looking for opportunities to provide the answer for him. Another way to say is class tells over time. Why four-round fights are dangerous early in a fighter's career. It doesn't often give time for them to create separation, which Garcia has done increasingly in this fight, separated himself. Time! Breathe. Good round, just like that. You load it up though. When he attacks, you gotta be sharp. And you gotta respond. Respond quickly though. On the inside. And when he attacks, he opens up. So take advantage of that. Block and go in the counter. By CompuBox count, the seventh round was the most offensive round of the fight. Garcia landed 17 out of 51, Burgos 10 out of 57. By far the highest number of landed punches in the fight. 17 punches landed by Garcia in that round suggests that he is thinking knockout again and looking for ways to shorten the distance and shorten the tender or the, uh, the length of the fight. When you think about Garcia's potential opponents if he wins tonight, if he gets by Gamboa, if it's Pacquiao. I mean, the guys in Garcia's not-too-distant future, potentially, are all fighters who, with good footwork, with good movement, who can get around you, surround you, step aside. He's going to have to learn how to deal with it, and he's showing some strides, I think, in this fight. Hard right hand lands for Garcia. Burgos felt that one. Good body shot by Garcia with the left hand. Taking Burgos into deeper and deeper water now as the eighth round progresses. And I don't think Burgos is mentally or emotionally checked out. But you can see the negotiation process happening. How much does he want to exert himself? How much does he want to risk tonight against Garcia? But we got to keep in mind that Burgos is a veteran, over 30 fights, third championship fight. He's been in these type of waters before. Maybe not against this caliber of fighter, but he's been in deep water before. But if he wants yet another shot, if he goes on, if this fight continues in this way and Garcia goes on to win, and he's already had three shots and come up short, you know, he should provide some kind of entertainment value so that he's not looked at as a dangerous opponent with three strikes against him. Oh, and by the way, might not make a good fight. I've watched a lot of Mikey Garcia in the past, and I don't know that I've ever fully appreciated his level of skill at blocking and parrying punches with his gloves. 
He's done an amazing job of it tonight, aided by the fact that, of course, the slightly longer and taller Burgos is fighting back at a distance from which Garcia can pretty much see everything coming. And that Burgos made an honest defensive fighter out of Mikey when he hit him with that left hook early, I think. Yeah, that, that tightened Garcia up a little bit, and I think it all goes back to Garcia being so relaxed. If you're tight, you can't see certain shots coming. Garcia is a master at staying relaxed, he's a master at distance, and, and that's what we're seeing on display right now. Garcia cutting off the ring, forcing Burgos into the corner and back against the ropes. Trying to find a moment when he can step forward and land a decisive shot. Earlier tonight, in the first fight on our televised card, we were in the heavyweight division for the 220th time on HBO Boxing, and you saw Artur Spielka of Poland against Brian Jennings of the United States. Jennings trying to add to his application to become the next meaningful American heavyweight, and the 225-pounder from Philadelphia ultimately was able to score a technical knockout win over Artur Spielka in the 10th round. Technical knockout. A good way to put it, because it was a cerebral, intelligent performance by Jennings, who was patient, picked his spots, went to the body, broke Spielka down, ultimately upped his punch count and his accuracy as the fight went on, and landed the heavy shots down the stretch to score the TKO. Hey, you gotta press him now. You gotta press. Be strong. It's a mouthpiece. Let's go, Juan Carlos. Let's go. Don't leave anything left. Don't leave it. That was Brian Jennings' first performance on HBO after a relatively inactive 2013 in which he changed managers and changed promoters. After five fights in 2012, he was impressive here tonight. I think the American people have an American heavyweight to get behind and support in Brian Jennings. He put on a tremendous performance tonight. Yeah, I agree. I think he's the best-looking American prospect in a minute. And he's got upside. And to Burgos. Definite upside, 18 pro fights, 10 knockouts. Still really getting his feet wet in the sport after having taken up boxing at age 24. I was going to say, to Burgos' credit, Garcia's not rushing in, the, in there either. And I know that he's obviously hurt Garcia early, but I think he's touched Garcia with some shots inside that's gotten him some respect. So... Burgos is, is, is being respected by Mikey right now. Well, that's not Garcia's style. You know, that's why he's much better when a guy rushes him, because he gets to put his skills on display. His natural temperament is not seek and destroy. It's counter. Right, but it's like you mentioned. He's on the A side, and with these big fights that are being talked about, at some point he's going to have to step on the, gra the gas and live up to his potential of being that puncher that he is. There's been very little inside fighting in the fight. There hasn't been a clinch. If I mention the referee's name, Harvey Dock, it's the first time I've mentioned his name in the entire call. He's been inconspicuous, as, by the way, was Mike Ortega in the heavyweight fight. Burgos came out with some renewed vigor in this round, and it, Mikey has done something to change that in the second half of the round here. Oh, I think it might have been the body shots at the one moment when they got close to each other, and Garcia fired away to the body with three or four shots. I think that's exactly what it was. And here once again, you see him cutting off the ring, trapping Burgos in the corner, but not taking any unwarranted risk. Right hand landed for Garcia. Even though the fans want to see Garcia get a knockout in this fight, I don't think it's knockout or bust. This is a good learning fight for Garcia if he's able to win this fight. He's fighting a tall, rangy fighter with movement. He's learned how to track him down and still get his punches off, but also maintain his defense. So this is a good fight for Garcia uh, if he's able to pull it off, which it looks like he will. Not a great fight for the fans, though. Yeah, but the, every fight is not a, a knockdown, drag out kind of fight. This is a good fight for his development if he's going to fight those bigger fights. Agreed. And it's very difficult to knock out a really good fighter Hi. if he makes a bargain with himself that he simply wants to go 12 rounds. Mikey might do it anyway here. See, see that fight's not over. He's trying. 
like that, Mike. Okay, you're going after him like that, you know, bending your knees. Keep doing that this round, right? Beautiful, beautiful. Because like that, like that, you're very aware, you know, you're doing this, but you're still seeing everything. Keep hands up high and keep that, keep that, keep that pressure going, all right? See, okay? Like, you gotta move, you gotta move. Yeah. You okay? Okay. There's some water on his head. Breathe, breathe. Don't stay on the ropes. Keep your distance. It's a range. Like this, like this, like this. And right hook and step in. Then a body shot, right? Okay, you know what I mean, right? Let's go. Round 10 begins, three rounds to go in this 12-round championship fight. Steve Weisfeld, how do you have it through nine? She might have it 89-82 Garcia. When Martinez fought Garcia, we said that Martinez was doing some good things, but it wasn't a path to victory. Same thing here. Burgos is doing some good things. It's not a path to victory. It seems like he's doing just enough to lose a great majority of the rounds. So after nine rounds, I have Garcia up by seven points. see Garcia being a little bit more aggressive, not reckless, but aggressive with his feet and trying to close the distance a little bit on Burgos. It looks like Mikey thinks he's figured something out and can fight more aggressively suddenly. Perfectly said, Andre Ward, aggressive with his feet. Because while he's still watching and waiting and biding his time for opportunities upstairs, he's trapping Burgos over and over in the corners and against the ropes with pressure and his footwork. Yeah, but you're, exactly. You'll rarely see Garcia overshoot. He, he's a master at defense. He's perfected it. And it's impressive to see him master this defense against a taller fighter. You just saw Burgos come up short with the jab, even though, to your point, even though Mikey appeared to be in punching range. Did you see right there, Burgos just missed the hook, and Garcia took just enough, you know, just enough of a step back, and then was right back on him, putting that mental and physical pressure on Burgos. Uppercut lands for Garcia. Nice short shot. And it's difficult. When a fighter makes up his mind that he doesn't want to be knocked out, especially a veteran, and Burgos is a, is a, a veteran of over 30 fights, it's very difficult to land a, a heavy shot and, and stop a fighter like that. But it's still a good learning experience. It'll still take your game to the next level. Seems to be Burgos' bailout shot is that left hook, that lead left hook. Garcia still putting pressure on Burgos, but he's keeping his distance. Just enough distance not to get hit, and just enough distance to explode with his own offense when, when, he, when, he, when he sees an opening. Good shot for Burgos. power chess match taking place in the small room at Madison Square Garden. Mikey Garcia stalking, stalking, but never overreaching or over-risking as he tries for a 12th consecutive knockout against a fighter who appears to have made a bargain with himself to try to go the distance. Immediately following this telecast, we remind you to stick around for real sports. Among the stories, a look at marijuana and the NFL, Mike, the country's most popular sport, accept its most popular drug. Medical, medical, medical authorities now stepping forward to talk about marijuana's salutary effects for head injuries. That's a big issue in the NFL. Don't, don't reach in with the body shot. Look for it. Boom, 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 and then go to the body. All right? All right? Pick it up a little more, okay? It's the next round. Pick it up a little more. You gotta look for those hard shots. I'm telling you, there's so much Vaseline there. I'm telling you. Clean it up with the towel. Lest I be taken to task on a technicality, let me point out that while I say Mikey Garcia enters with 11 consecutive knockouts, he actually 
his win over Orlando Salido at the beginning of last year was called a technical win because it ended with Garcia with a broken nose. He had already knocked Salido down four times. The ultimate effect was that of a technical knockout, but it was a technical win instead. So technically, highly technically, he doesn't really have 11 consecutive knockouts. He has 10 knockouts and one technical win in that streak. And in the technical win, he totally dominated the other fighter in the nature of a knockout. Mikey has fight-changing power, but I don't think it was the right hand that is the moment in this fight where it became a wrap. It, as is the case in many of Mikey's fights, it went from being competitive very early to really a rout. When did that happen? Can you exactly put your finger on it? No, he just is the better man and over time imposes himself. He's getting it done right now. Hitting Burgos with body shots and combinations upstairs. While still maintaining a defensively responsible position. Steady attack from Garcia right now. Continues to block almost all of Burgos' punches with his gloves. Makes it easier to see that too when one fighter wears black gloves and the other one wears red. <laughs> and again, I don't want to belabor the point, but I got to let it be known. Good, good exchange from both fighters. Some may be saying, why doesn't Garcia step it up and get Burgos out of there? He's a veteran of over 30 fights. This is his third championship fight. He's still winging. He's still throwing punches. It's not as easy as it looks. Garcia could possibly step it up, but I don't think he wants to take that extra, that extra risk right now. He's way ahead on the scorecards as far as I see it. And while he has certain things in common with a guy, say, like Gennady Golovkin, his basic temperament is different. He's not always looking to press the attack. He's more of a, uh, a boxer puncher than a puncher boxer. Golovkin, in the middleweight division, has 15 consecutive knockouts and the highest knockout percentage of any reigning title holder in the sport. And we saw Burgos land a sneaky right hand. He's still sneaky, he's still dangerous, and Garcia understands that. Some in the crowd are beginning to boo. Timbo! That may motivate Mikey even more to take the risk. But, on the other hand, his personality doesn't really respond to that. You okay? You gotta load it up. Throw the left one. You gotta put it down. What's wrong? It's the last round. Come on, so you're strong. Attack the body. At top, you're not hurting him. Don't give the run away, but don't don't get careless either, all right? Don't get careless either. That's wrong, all right? Okay, don't get careless right here, right? Careful. Careful, the fight starts. All right? You're going to come with everything. Hands up high. Round 12. And you heard Burgos' corner asking him, What's wrong? You've got to attack the body, you've got to put him down. What's wrong is exactly what. Garcia thought was wrong for Burgos heading in, which is everything Burgos does, Mikey does better. Yeah, Mikey Garcia, that's what's wrong. <laughs> Garcia even said going into this fight, he may have to beat him over the distance. Burgos may be tough to knock out. He anticipated something like this. And you wonder if that will in any way stall the freight train of Garcia's star track and the promoter's ambition that he winds up being a pay-per-view star. 
Will the writers here in New York tomorrow be saying, well, it wasn't all that spectacular? Well, he, he hasn't generated the electricity he's generated in, in some of his recent fights, but I think it's apparent that that's not all him. That's a, a, a guy who's really not very willing to engage. You can't ask a fighter to be something he's not, and Mikey's not just going to run headlong into an opponent and just start winging punches. I don't think Garcia's stock drops at all. I think this is just the nature of the sport. Everybody's not going to go, and I think we get intoxicated with knockouts sometimes, and we think that every fighter is going to go. Again, Burgos is a veteran. He's taking the shots. He's still here, and Garcia's winning the fight over 12 rounds, which a I think is going to help point. him. A great point, Andre Ward, as more in the crowd begin to boo. Even at the moment when he was the absolute knockout king of boxing, Mike Tyson was going the distance with Tony Tucker, going the distance with James Bone Crusher Smith, going to the last 10 seconds with Jose Ribalta, going the distance with Mitch Blood Green. You don't get a knockout every time. Particularly no. if the opponent isn't willing to engage. I think this fight is good for Garcia. Because? He keeps him sober. Sometimes you can get caught up in your own press and you think subliminally that I can knock everybody out and right now he's, it, it's, you know, he's being shown that everybody's not going to go so I think he keeps them on. You think Gamboa sees something in this fight that he can use if they meet down the road or even in their next fight? That's possible. All fighters think like that but at the same time Gamboa is different than Burgos so it's hard to say until these guys actually meet. A lot faster than Burgos. A lot shorter. Gamboa won't fight him like Burgos did. Gambo! Mikey might not fight Gamboa the same way either. So we go the distance. Fatima Garcia at ringside applauding for her husband's seemingly easy route going decision win performance if in fact the judges cooperate with the kinds of scores we would expect steve weisfeld our unofficial ringside score for boxing after dark what was your final score i had it 119 to 109 as much as you'd like to give credit to uh burgos garcia landed more in just about every single round and as matt said he was just a little bit better, so I have it 11 rounds to one. And how about the judges' biographies? Who are the three official judges? Julie Letterman was inducted two months ago in the New Jersey Boxing Hall of Fame and is without question one of the top judges out there. Julie had Perez over Abdus Salamov by five, and that was a good score. The second judge, Florida's Michael Pernick, has been judging for over 20 years and has given numerous seminars. Michael had Pacquiao, a shutout winner over Rios and Macau, and that was a good score in a very one-sided fight. John Padere is an often unsung 25-year veteran from New Jersey who typically does a great job. John and I both had Trout over Cotto by six points. I may be biased, but I would say that was a terrific score. Miles in Burgos's corner. Happy that he finished the fight in good order, I suppose. Still waiting on the scorecards from the three official judges whom Steve Weisfeld described to you. By the way, there's a website which ranks judges according to their consistency and according to the quality of their scorecards from fight to fight to fight. And that website ranks Julie Letterman as one of the top five scorers in the whole world. Big compliment paid to the star woman judge of New York and New Jersey. And now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer with the official results. The ladies and gentlemen here at Madison Square Garden, we go to the scorecards. Julie Letterman scores at 118 to 110. Same score from... Michael Pernick and 119 to 109 is the score from John Pottery.
All three judges scored it for the winner by unanimous decision. Still WBO Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Miguel Angel, Mikey Garcia. Garcia remains unbeaten at 34 wins, no losses. The knockout string ends, but his knockout percentage is still one of the highest in the sport. Juan Carlos Burgos, as we began discussing in the middle rounds, seemed to make a bargain with himself that he was interested in going the distance tonight. That he accomplished. Final CompuBox numbers will show Mikey Garcia's increasing dominance throughout the fight. He winds up landing 74 more punches than Burgos, and he stretched that margin throughout the fight. He winds up throwing 17 or three punches more. Through most of the fight, Burgos was the one who was throwing more punches. Garcia's skilled defense limited Burgos to only 26 percent, or excuse me, 16 percent landing percentage. Power shots, Garcia landing 32 more, throwing 39 more, and landing at a significantly higher percentage. Max Kellerman stands by now with the winner and still champ. Mikey, congratulations on a dominant performance. As with many of your fights, it started out competitive first couple rounds, and somewhere in the middle of the fight, you look up and you're, it's a rout. You're dominating. How do you do that? I felt my rhythm. I felt my distance. Um, his height was giving me a little difficulties at first, um, his height and his reach, but uh, once I found my rhythm, my, my range, I was able to just work at, at that pace. And, you know, he's a tough guy. He's resilient. He can take a punch. And, you know, he, he went on the distance. I was expecting him to do that. We see you do your very best work when fighters come at you and allow you to counter with your, with your skills and precision and power. When guys move, it makes it a little more difficult for you. Your prospective opponents in the not-too-distant future include names like Yuri Orcas Gamboa, who's here tonight, Manny Pacquiao's been mentioned. These guys move, and they're very talented. What do you do about that? I find my distance, I find my range, my timing. Timing beats speed, and I, uh, I have all that skill. So I have all those skills, and when I, when I fight someone like themselves, like the names you just mentioned, I'll prepare for them. Could one of those fights be next for you? Gamboa, for example? If they want to sit down and put it on the table, we gotta, that's what we got to do. They know what to do. We know what to do. Got to sit down and negotiate the fight, and we'll agree on, on the terms. Thanks, Mike, and congratulations. You're welcome.